your life now? So, already here. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Raja Benali. I'm a software engineer and a member of the EMA organization. I have with me several members of EMA. Uh, and uh, on behalf of the team, I would like to welcome you to today's Code at Home session. So just um, to explain to you, the main goal of these sessions are for you to learn how to code by creating a game. And before starting, I'm going to explain to you how we'll do this workshop. So uh, for I see that some people are here and the some of you have participated in previous workshops so we will welcome you we're happy to have you here again um and for today it's going to be a platform game in scratch and how this is going to be uh we will show you some videos uh, about this game how to code this game and then after each video we'll explain to you um how to do it we're going to do it step by step with you and then uh, we will, um, we'll, you, you, you guys can actually uh, talk to us via the YouTube chat. We're going to look at it and answer your questions. In case you have any concerns or questions or something is not working on your side, you can uh, tell us on, in the chat and our team will um, explain to you. Don't, don't worry if uh, uh, something is going too fast, you can just tell us to uh, to slow down or if there's something specific you would like us to explain again we will, we will do so and at the end of this session uh, uh like any other code at home session you will get a success certificate with your name uh so let's get started uh the first thing we're gonna do is uh, i'll show you the first video um about this game so yeah i'll share it now Hey, welcome to day four of Scratch Games. Today, you will create a platform game. In this type of game, a sprite must move across raised platforms or obstacles. Some popular platform game examples include Super Mario Brothers, Donkey Kong, and more recently, Doodle Jump. Look at how if statements and events are used in one of the earliest platform games, Donkey Kong. In Donkey Kong, a character named Mario must rescue another character while climbing a tower and avoiding Donkey Kong's barrels. First, look at how events are used in this game. Remember from day two's racing game that events allow computer scientists like you to tell a computer when to run code or complete an action. When the user presses the right arrow, Mario moves right. When the user presses the left arrow, Mario moves left. And when the user presses the space key, Mario jumps. These examples all represent an important computer science concept you're going to work with today, events. Events tell the computer when to run code. Next, take a look at how Donkey Kong uses if statements. You used if statements in day three's maze game to instruct the computer to make decisions. If statements look like this. If a condition is true, then do this action. In Donkey Kong, if Mario is touching a platform, then he will fall. If Mario touches a barrel, then he loses a life. If Mario reaches a sprite, then the user wins. The platform game that you will create today features a sprite that must jump into platforms to reach another sprite. This game is similar to Donkey Kong and uses the same types of events and if statement code. In this game, the sprite moves when the arrow keys are pressed. If the sprite is not touching a platform, then it will fall until it dies. If the sprite reaches a sprite at the top of the platform, then the user wins. To get started, open the starter project by clicking on the link next to this page. Project. To select a sprite, click Choose New Sprite from Library. Then arrange the sprites on the screen in a way that makes sense for your game. You can change the sprite size. Use the time during this step to make your project look the way you want it to look. Then return to the screen and click the green arrow to move on to the next screencast. Now it's your turn. Open the platform starter project, add two sprites, and position them correctly for your game. All right, so that was the first video of today's session. 
Uh, so first, uh, first, I'm going to explain the two programming concepts that we're explaining in this video. Uh, they talked about events and if statements. So the programming concept that was explained uh, was an event. Uh, an example of an event is when we say when when the user presses the left arrow, then Mario moves left. So this is an event. What happened? A user pressed a key. This is an event. And when an event happens, we uh, we tell the computer what to do. So when a user presses the left arrow, we move. The, the, we tell the computer to move Mario to the left. Uh, so um, the second one uh, was if statement. So for the if statement, uh, it's uh, the same, almost the same thing. Uh, if the right arrow was pressed, if the right arrow was pressed, then we move to the right. So the condition, they talked about the condition and an action. So the condition here is when the right arrow is pressed. If the right arrow is pressed, then we move to the right. So this is the two concepts that were explained. And uh, copy pasting, we're sharing the link for the platform to start coding. Please click on that link and uh, you uh, you're gonna get the scratch uh, the scratch platform like this so as i'm sharing on the screen please click on that link and tell us if it opens for you or not please tell us in the chat if the link opens for you All right, it's done, got it. So if you open it, you're going to have the same thing as me on, like, on the screen. It opens, OK. If you have any issue, please tell us in the chat. All right, seems like everything is, is, is good. Uh, so I'm just going to zoom in a little bit in case you have trouble seeing it. So this is where we're going to put our code. So on the left, you have the blocks that we're going to use to tell our computer what needs to be done in our game. So you have several types of block. And here in the middle, uh, in, um, this is the like, uh, empty space, you have a space where we're going to put our blocks, our code. So we can just drag and drop them to code. And here on the right, this is how our game will be displayed. So you have uh, several elements here, and we're gonna put code for for this uh, for these elements. Uh, so this is uh, basically uh, how the, this platform is uh, done, and we're gonna use it. So the first thing that was uh, done in this video was adding. Um, so sorry, the game will be that our monkey here will jump, all right, until it gets to something. So the final goal, we're gonna add it. And in the video, they added a balloon. You can add a balloon or whatever you want, actually. So to do that, you go here on the bottom right. This, it, it's written choose a sprite. So you just click here, and then you have the balloon right here. You click on it. All right, now it's displayed here. Sorry. Now you have it next to the monkey. So please tell me if you have the balloon right now in the screen. You should have the same element as me. Even if they're not placed the same, the same way, it's all right. It's OK. Tell me in the chat if you have the balloon now. You can click on it and position it wherever you want. So for this game, we're going to put it here. So the goal of our game will be that this monkey will jump on these platforms and then touches the balloon and we win. So yeah, that, that's the first thing we're going to do. Uh, and so, all right. Um, 
it's done. Yes. Can you repeat, please? So just here on the bottom right, you have a round button here. And when you go on it, you see choose a sprite on the left. So choose a sprite on the left and then you click and it opens. It opens this and then you have several elements. And for us, the end goal will be the end goal will be the balloon. So you just click on the balloon and it will this it will add it to your game. So here we have two. But we only need one. So all right. You have the balloon. That's that's great. Got it. Yes. All right. Done. Perfect. So we see that our monkey here is very big. What we're going to do, it just uh, uh, changes its size from 75 to 50. It's because it's too big. And then you can place it on the bottom like this. So you should have this uh, on your screen. So I repeat, the game will be for our monkey to jump on the platforms and touch the balloon, the end goal. And to get the balloon, you go on the bottom right. All right, I think we can move on to the next video. Um, I'm going to display it. And yeah. In this video, you'll program a sprite to jump when the up arrow key is pressed and fall when it's not touching a platform. To move the sprite in different directions, you'll use the X and Y coordinate system. For every position on the stage, there are two values, an X and a Y. X values are the horizontal values. A negative X position is on the left side of the stage, and a positive X position is on the right side of the stage. Y values are the vertical values. A positive Y position is on the top of the screen, and a negative Y position is on the bottom of the screen. To make the sprite move up, drag out a change Y block. The sprite move, tinker with the value in the change Y block until you get an effect you like. This example uses a value of 50. To program the sprite to move back down, drag out another change Y block. A positive value moved the sprite up to try a negative value to move it down. This example uses a value of negative 50. Click the block to test. Great, the sprite comes back down. Next. Tell the program when to run this code. Click on events and add a when space key press block to the up movement. This sprite should move up when the up arrow key is pressed. So change the value of this block to up arrow. Try it out now. Nice. Pressing the up arrow makes the sprite move up. Next, program the sprite to move down. The sprite should fall if it's not touching a platform. So program the sprite to make a decision. If the sprite is not touching the ground or a platform, then it should move down. Select an if block from the control menu and place it around the change Y block. This starter project was designed so that all the surfaces that the sprite stands on are black. So use a touching color block from the sensing menu as the condition. Now this reads, if touching black, move down. But you want the sprite to move down if it's not touching black. Go to the operators menu and add a not block. Lastly, add an event to tell the computer when to run this code. Go to events, drag out a one flat clicked block, and add it to this if block. Test this. Oh no, the sprite moved down, but stopped before it reached the color black. In this case, the if statement is programmed to run only one time. When the flag is clicked, the computer checks the if statement, sees that the sprite isn't touching black, moves down, and stops running. To make the program continually check if the sprite is not touching black, click Control and add a forever loop around the if statement. Now test this. Awesome. If the sprite is falling too fast for your game, change the negative 50 in the change Y block to something smaller. This example uses negative 10. Now it's your turn. Program the sprite to move up and down with the change Y by blocks. Program the sprite to move up when the up arrow key is pressed. Then, use an if statement and forever loop to make the sprite go down when not touching a black platform. All right, so is it for the second video? Um, so we're going to program our, uh, our monkey. We're going to put code for our monkey to go 
up and down. So I'm going to let Margin um, explain to us how we're going to code this. Margin, are you with us? Yes, I am. All right. So let's get going. What should I do? Okay. So to get um, the monkey to move up and down, you have to to drop to drag um, a change uh, y y to to the to the right side of the screen. Change by y. You have to drag and drop it. And it's um, in motion. Yeah, can you can you talk louder, please? Um, yes. So what should I so, do? Um, you will find in motion uh, the the buttons to to change by um, by y the the position of your monkey. All right, and should I drag and drop a block? Yes, you, you should drag and drop it, uh, a block that's in motion. In motion, okay. Yes. So I go to motion blocks at the top here. The blue. Yes. You, you click. You yes, click I clicked. Motion. And which one should I drag okay. and drop? You should drag the change Y. Change Y, change y by 10. Yes. This one. All right. Yes. So guys, go on the motion blocks, the blue ones at the top, and then you take change Y by 10 and you drop it here. By the way, just to, to be sure, make sure that you are on the monkey and not on the balloon. Like the, the it's not selected, you can select the monkey or put in code for the monkey. So yes, Margin, uh, after I drag and drop the chain Y by 10, what should I do? You have to change um, the the value by which you, you want your monkey to move. Um, if, if you want your monkey to move up, you have uh, the value should be positive. If you want your monkey to move down, you have to be negative. All right. So guys, you see if I click, I keep clicking, uh, the monkey is going up. And if I put minus 10, I put a minus sign before 10, it's going to go down. So this is how we're going to control our monkey. Yes, so what should I do now? Now that you know that your monkey can go up and down, you can Um, so, yeah, so to control the two for our monkey to go up and down, we need two blocks. So we're going to take again a by 10 block and we put a minus sign before it. So see if I click on this one, it's going up. If I click on this one, it's going down. So we need to have these two blocks. Everyone, make sure you have the two. So, Margin, what should I, which block should I add? Okay, so you should add a if button to um to get the the last wait um. Uh, um yeah. I can't hear you. Your voice is cutting. Um. I don't know what's wrong with your voice. Um, again, are you with us? Yes, I am. Okay, so, so now that you know, uh, you can have a, a when button to to get an event to go up when you press it on the off arrow. Okay, so guys, what we want to add a condition here. Uh, so when we click the up arrow our monkey needs to go up we need to yes. add more code to this block and yes. which 
uh, kind of blocks do I need? Which one? It's a bl block that is an event. It's a when block. Okay, so we go on event, and then you drag when... and drop it to the the first the first blue block. All right. So we take the web space key pressed the second block in the event, and then we put it on top of change y by ten. All right. And then what do we do? And that's the when you you have to you have to. You have to to uh, to make sure that your your, your when block is when a power is pressed. All right. So we click on space here to have a menu, and on the menu we select which one. A arrow. Up arrow. Okay. So now, on on your keyboards, we need to test it. On your keyboard, click on your up arrow. And it should go up. Um, all right. We continue. I can't hear you. Are okay, you now. No, I'm not, I was not. Uh, now you can have had an if condition that that will stop your monkey for. Uh, that we make it go down when it's up. Sing. When All right. It's not touching the ground. And it's also in event. So in it's event. in event. Yes. Where should we take it? Which one? In actually, I think it's in it's in, in control. Yes. In Is control. it in control? Yes, in it, it's in control. All right, condition. which one? If condition? Yes. All right, so this block, if then, where should we put it? You should put it with the second, the second blue block. All right, so we put it here with change y by, by minus 10, and then? Yes. Now you, you want to add an, a not in, in the, with, with your if? So that okay. when you're not touching the color black, it will go down. Okay, so, so we're in, constructing our condition. It's in operate operator. Operators, okay. Yes. Green one here. Which one should we select? You should select the, the not. The not. All yes. right. So this one. Yes, this one. You drag and drop it. So we put it in our if condition. That's right. Next, you you will go in in sensing in the blue the blue sensing. one like this. All right. So in sensing blocks here, the blue ones, yes. like blue. You Which one? The, the first one. The first one. The... So the first one, touch yes. touching mouse pointer. So touching. we take this one. Yes, and you will put it with with the knot in inside the if. All right. So here we put it inside the knot here. Oh, sorry. So make sure it's inside knot in knot uh, like this. It should be displayed like this. Okay. Now you you will change the. The 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 mouse pointer to touching color black, which represents the ground in your game. All right. So we have this menu. We click on mouse pointer to change. Which one? The color black. All right. So this is not what we're gonna use right now. Uh, let's put it back. So guys, what we're trying to do is. Uh, when our monkey is up, it needs to fall down. This is the game. So for it to fall down, we need to stop it. And it should stop when it touches the black color. This is our condition. And here we have if it's not touching the black color, it should fall. And color, the block will be this one, the second block. 
touch color. So take the second block touch color and put it inside the not block. So Marguerite, tell me which color should we put here? Black. The black color. Yes. So guys, click on the wrong color here, and you have this option for the color. And down here, you click, and you see that you can select a color on the screen. So you go down and you make sure to select the black. So here you have your condition, Marguerite, like, like you told us. So guys, tell me if this, I think several people said that it's complete, they're done. So make sure to, to tell us if you have any issues in the chat. Uh, all right, I think we can go on. Marguerite, what should we do? Now, if you want to test what you've done so far, you can click on the on the red, the, the, the green flag to, to see your monkey go, go down. So we need to add another block to be able to test it with the green flag. So first, guys, you have these two blocks. We go to events. Go, guys, to events, the, the blocks. The first block, when flag, green flag is clicked, and you put it on top of this block, of these. Now, when we click on the flag, it will test this code. So, Margin, we're going to test our game now if our monkey goes up and down. So, you see that. So you see that it only falls a little bit. It doesn't fall all the way through, uh, all the way to the to the ground. So you see when I click, it only falls a little bit. So we, we need to make sure that it, it falls all the way to the ground, the black uh, color. So what, what do we? What should we add, uh, Marvin, to, to this? To make it fall all the way to the ground, you should, you should change the, the value by, by which the your monkey will fall down. So you change it by with 50. By 50? Yes. It's going to fall really fast. All right. You see it falls really fast. So next, what do we do? Next, if if you want the um, the this part to to go uh, to go on forever, you have yeah. to, you have to go in event. In event, in event, right. you will find um, the forever block. You will drag this block and drop it with your with okay, the, so, the other block. Yeah. So guys, uh, we need this. Our monkey falls only a little bit. It doesn't repeat. It falls only one time by 50, by uh, 50. And we need it to keep falling until it touches the green, the black color. And for that, we go to the control blocks and we take forever block. So we have several blocks here. You take the forever one and you put it like this. So you put everything inside the forever block. So now when we click, what, the, what this means is when we click on the green flag, it will repeat forever this code. And this code is if we're not touching the black color, go down by 50. So it goes down until it touches the black color. Now our monkey should fall. You see, it keeps falling now. If we jump, it falls until it touches the black color. Tell us in the chat if you have all this right now, if you're done.
Um, so we can go on with the next video. So now our monkey jumps and it's falling. The next step will be for our monkey to go left and right. We need to control it to go left and right. So I'm going to put the next video about this. And you guys, you can tell me in the chat if uh, in case there's anything wrong. So I'm going to open the next video. Sorry, it's here. It's going to put the sound. And this video will provide key parts of this to move the sprite left and right. To move left and right, how do I change X block? Click the block to test. Great, the sprite moves to the right. To move the sprite to the left, drag out another change X block and change the value to negative 10. Click the block to test. Nice. Next, tell the computer when to run this code. Click events and select the when key pressed event for both blocks. Change the drop down to the left arrow key for the left movement and the right arrow key for the right movement. Now test your code. The sprite now moves left and right with the arrow keys and jumps when the up arrow is pressed. The sprite isn't moving smoothly when it moves left and right. If you press and hold the right arrow, the sprite will move to the right and stop for a bit before moving again. The sprite should continually move until the arrow key is no longer being pressed. Use a repeat until block to fix this. Drag out a repeat until block from the control menu. Then select a not block from operators and a key press block from sensing. Change the value of the sensing block to right key press. This block stack now reads, repeat moving until the right arrow key is no longer being pressed. Try it out. Awesome. Now the sprite moves to the right smoothly. Apply the same change to the left arrow by duplicating your code and changing the values to match the left arrow. Great. Now it's your turn. Move your sprite left and right with change X by blocks. Use key press events to tell the computer when to run the change X blocks. Then run this code until the key is no longer being pressed with a repeat until block. All right, so that was the video for moving left and right. And all right, uh, and uh, Brita will be the one who will explain to us how we're going to code this. So guys, if yeah. the screen is is blur is blurry for you, uh, just listen to us. Where we explain to you where to take the blocks and where to move them, so you can just follow uh, with us, and uh, it's gonna be all right. So Brita, tell us how what we're gonna do now. Okay, so first we'll go to the Notion menu. Motion, all right. Motion, and select the block uh, change x by. So we change scroll a little bit. Yes. Change uh, X one, by. Yes. All right. And we will put the same block again. Okay. The same block. block. Mm -hmm. And for the second block, we will add uh, a minus before the 10. So for this block, we put a minus sign before the 10. All right. Yes, so one block is for go to the right, and the second mm -hmm. block with the minus is for go to the left. Go to the right and go to the left. All right. So if if we click on it to test it, you see that when you click on this one, you go to the right, and when you click on this one, you go to the left, as Voita told us. Yes. All right. So now we will add an event. So mm -hmm. on the menu, uh, we'll go to the event category. All right. And Events. then we will we will add for each block the block uh, when key is pressed. Okay. So when key is pressed, and so it's the second block here. Where should we put it? Uh, just above the the blue block, the change X. The blue. Okay. For the other two. The second one too. So we take the same block when when key pressed. When space key pressed, and you put it on top of the blocks. Yeah. Two blocks here. So the block who make who, who makes the monkey go to the right, 
we will okay. select um, the right key option. Okay. So the for right the block, key. yeah, the right arrow we put in the menu when we score, we get right arrow. So it should be when right arrow key pressed, change X by 10. So this is the one to go to the right. And then for the other one, what should uh, we for do? the other one, we will select a, a left key arrow. Left key, left left arrow. Yes. Okay. A left arrow. All right. So it should read. You should read when left arrow key pressed, change X by minus ten. So this is the two blocks uh, for uh, going to the left and right. Yes. So, so now you can try. So test it on your keyboard. Click on the right arrow and the left arrow. So you see that it moves by itself when we click. Yes. But the problem yeah. is when we, we click uh, more longer, it doesn't work. We need to click uh, a lot of time. Yeah, it's not as smooth as we want. Usually when you yes. play a game, it's really smooth, but this, it moves little by little. little so. So Can I try to make it smooth? Yes, for fix that, we go to to the control on the menu. All right, the control blocks, and then... And we will select the block repeat until. Re repeat until, okay. Yes. Is it this one? I need to scroll, I think, yes. So, repeat until, yes, yes. and repeat. where do we put it? Um, oh, and we, 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 we put it um, just before the blue block, change X block. Okay, so here? Yes. So we yes, should have our it. repeat and then inside change X by 10. So it should be like this. Yes. And inside this block, we will add an operator. Okay, so we go on the operator blocks in, the, in green. Yes on the operator, and we will select the NOT block. The NOT block, okay. And we put it... And we put it here, repeat until, and then you put the yes. NOT block. Okay, and in this NOT block, we will put a block from the sensing category. So sensing, we click yes. on sensing on the left, and then and then we will uh, uh, drag the um, key press block. Key pressed block. So this block, it's written key space pressed. Yes. And we take it. And we, we put, put it, it? On, the, on the not block. So inside not block. Yes. So sorry, you just smooth them a little bit. So you have repeat until and in the small space you have not and inside the not block you have key space pressed yes and just like in the beginning um on the space we will select a uh, right arrow so instead of space we click yes, on space select. yeah right arrow uh, right arrow all right okay so now we will do the exactly same things for the, the second block. Okay, the second block. The yes. So okay. a repeatential block. So we're going to duplicate these, these, these blocks, so we won't have to do, do them again. Actually, let's do yes. them again, so they know how to do it. Yes, yes. So we will, on the control menu. Control menu. Use so now we're menu. focusing on the left arrow. Control menu, tell me. And we will use the uh, repeat and chill. So you go to the repeat until block, we select it, drag and drop it. And we put it, yes, just above the, the blue block. Mm -hmm. And on the repeat and chill block, we will add an operator. The operator blocks, the ones here. And we and will add we a block. Not block, okay. So inside we have not block. 
Yes. And on the node block, we will go to the sensing menu. Sensing menu, All right? And add the key key space pressed. Key space pressed. Okay. Is the block key space pressed? We take yes. it. And what then do we, we do? We we put it on the nut block. So in you have your space here. You put the key space pressed. Yes, and we change uh, the space. And we select uh, instead a uh, left key arrow. Okay, so instead of space, we want left arrow. So we click on space and we go to left arrow. You click, it should be selected. All right. Please, guys, tell us if you have an initial understanding or anything is not working on your side. So, Brita, what should we do now? Should we test it? So now it's done. Oh, yes, you, we can try. All right. So how do we test it? Uh, we click on the uh, green flag. Okay, green flag. And now you can press a uh, left key arrow or the right key arrow, and we can see that Space. the monkey uh, move properly. Yeah, it's more smooth. Before it yes. was really rough. It moves little by little, but here. It's sliding. You can still go up. All right. So guys, tell us if you are done with this part, if we can move on to the next video. It's working. It's working. It's the same. We're going to wait a little bit because there's a little delay. That. Tell us when you're done. Okay, done. It's working. If you have any tell us exactly what's not working for you so we can uh, say it again so just i'm gonna repeat what's uh what we just added so when right arrow key pressed so i'm talking i'm reading the code for the right arrow repeat until inside you have not key right arrow pressed inside the repeat until you have changed x by 10 and you have the same thing on the left or the left arrow but you just have in the menus, each, instead of right arrow, you have left arrow. And then the other difference is that instead of changing X by 10, we change X by minus 10. This is the code for moving to the left and right. And I guess now we're going to move on to the, the other video. So we're going to go on with the, this fourth video. This video, you will create a winning dish. I'm just going to screen and start again. In this video, you will create a winning condition for your game. If the two sprites touch, then the user wins this platform game. To program a winning condition, add another conditional statement. Click the control menu and place an if block inside the forever loop. The rest of the code in this step will be up to you to design and create. Decide what will happen if the sprite gets to its goal. You can program your sprite to say, yay, you won, or do a backflip, or even bounce around the stage. It's up to you. A big part of computer science is persisting through tough problems. If the first solution you try doesn't work, try again. Now it's your turn. Program an if statement for when the user wins. Then decide how your sprite should celebrate when it wins. Once you have a winning condition that you're happy with, ask a friend to try your game. All right, this is the video for the winning. I saw in the chat that someone doesn't understand the, the smoothing part of, the, of this code. So what what was wrong with the previous version was that when you move to the left and right, it moves little by little. It's really rough. It's not uh, when you keep clicking, it doesn't go uh, as smoothly. So what we did was make the movement repeat. Sorry, just uh, what we added was repeat until repeat until block. 
So we're, we're telling the code that we should move as long as we are pressing the right, uh, at the right arrow, our monkey should go fast to the right. And the same thing for the left. If we don't do that, it, it will run the code one stops, run, stops, run, stops, instead of um, always running until we're not pressing on the left arrow or right arrow. So this is how we make it smooth. I guess uh, I hope that answers your question. Um, Can the monkey hold the balloon? OK, so we're going to move on with the, the winning condition that Alexandre will explain to us. So Alexandre, are you with us? Yes. So right. um, first, we will need to, to to touch to the main loop. Um, the main loop is the, the one where there's the green flag when the green flag is clicked. So that's the statement we'll be interested in. And okay. um, in yes. the um, in, yes, in the forever loop, um, we need an if statement which is in control blocks. Yes, just uh, I'm sorry, guys, um, uh, because we clicked, the, the code is still running. I see that the code is still running to stop the game from running. You click on the red uh, dot here next to the green flag because it's still running. Uh, so we just click to make it stop. And as Alexandre said, we're going to focus on this block, which start with, with uh, when green flag clicked. So Alexandre, tell us how we're going to put this. Mm, so under the first if, we're going to put uh, another one. All right. In so the control blocks. Mm. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take the if then, this, this one. Okay, so we take the if block from control blocks. And, and, and put yes, it. yes, under the, under the object, other. Yes. Yeah. So just work this a little bit. Right. And what do we do now? We're gonna take a sensing block. So we go on sensing the blue one, and then. Mm -hmm. And so what we want is that when the monkey touches the balloon, then we won. So we're gonna take an if uh, touching. So if. The monkey is touching, yes, the balloon, the first yeah. one. The first block? Yes. And this is our condition. Yeah. So right. instead of touching the mouse, we are going to choose the balloon. So yeah, I was right, yeah, balloon one. Okay. So we're, we're coding the winning condition that when our monkey touches Balloon uh, means it means that the monkey won. We won. So the condition here, if touching the balloon, then we're gonna do something. Then we won. So Alexandre, tell us what should we do when our monkey touches the balloon? Mm, yeah. So now we do whatever we want as we won. So for example, we can ta take um, a looks block. All right. So that. Um, our monkey says something when he won. Yeah. And we're going to take the say four seconds. Okay. But You're going to take, it's the blocks under the motion. So we're taking the looks block and we're taking the first block. So it says, say hello for two seconds. This is the block we're going to take. Where should we put it, Alexandre? Mm, in the if statement, the touching. Okay. Balloon. So. Yeah, so inside here, mm. we're going to put it. And let's say, for example, that we won. Yeah, we won, for example. Okay. Mm. So this is the text that will be displayed when we won. So you can actually write whatever you want, guys. And for Alexandre said that we can. So you won. All right. So now if we take our monkey and it touches the balloon. Did we? Uh, are we missing some code? Mm, no. Um, did you run the oh. green flag? Uh, no. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot to read. So, um, 
we first click on the green flag. So we can take our. Oh, great. So we take, great. yeah. You see that the text is displayed. When we touch the balloon, it says you won. So what else should we do? Mm, so now we could do a little animation so that when he wins, he turns or jumps or whatever. Mm, so we could take a control block. The control, okay. Yeah, and just the repeat one, the, so th the second one. Yeah. Mm. So it's written repeat 10, 10 times. So we take the repeat one. And we're going to put it just after the say uh, you won command. Okay. Mm. Say, I. And now let's say then we'd, uh, we'd take a motion block. Motion block, okay. Yeah. The first section, yeah. And we are going to mm, turn right de turn right degrees, mm, the 15, yeah, the second one. So... Present. All right, so we're taking the second block, turn to the right, yeah. 15 degrees, so we take this block. Yeah. Where do we put it? Mm, in the repeat block. So, yeah. yeah. So, by the repeat 10 in the turn block, what does this mean, Alexandre? Mm, it means that we're going to turn 10 times 15 degrees when we won. All right. So we're trying to make our monkey w yeah. when we uh, when we won. Mm. Yes. All right. So if we take it here, did, did, are we missing it up? It's... Oh, oh no. Hmm. Maybe it's uh, we we should rotate more degrees maybe, so that it okay. it makes uh, a plenty turn. All right. So actually, so, yeah. maybe thirty degrees. Thirty would be would be more. Yeah. Right. So this is normal because we put uh, two seconds. It's saying what what this is doing is when we touch the balloon, it says you won for two seconds, and then it will repeat the the turning. It will rotate okay. on itself. So it's it's waiting actually. If we want the monkey to do a complete uh, rotation, we need to repeat mm -hmm. uh, 30 degrees 40 times. Mm. So, repeat okay, so 40 times, yeah. Right. So now when we put our monkey on the balloon. Okay, so it did, a, it rotates, it's still rotating. Mm -hmm. oh. Maybe forty-eight. Yeah, let's 48. Call it forty-eight times. Forty-eight times. So we're gonna repeat it forty-eight times. All right. All right. All right. Um, so, guys, tell us in the chat if you have all the code until now. Uh, tell us in the chat if you're done. So we're going to wait a little bit. Hmm. For those of you who can 
let's see properly uh, the screen. We're gonna. I'm just gonna read uh, again what we uh, what we did. We took uh, an if if then block here. We have an if then block. We put it under the our about the falling. So inside the condition, we have touch balloon one. So we have this condition, and then when we win, we won. Uh, it will say you won for two seconds. And then it will rotate. The monkey will rotate on itself. And for that, we put a repeat block. Uh, and we put 48. And inside the repeat block, we put turn 30 degrees. So, sorry. <clears throat> I guess now uh, we have uh, our code. And everyone is saying it's working. It's working. All right. If there's any issue, please tell us in the chat. Um, so, okay, or we can do one bonus. So guys, we have our code now. Everything is, uh, is going well for now. Um, we have all the steps, but we're, we're, we're going to try to make the game more complex by adding a bonus, some bonus. So it's going to be Veronia who will explain to us what we're going to add as a, a bonus. Veronia. I'm here. Right. So as uh, as we said, uh, we, we're going to make some bonus. So we're going to uh, we're going to write. Um, no, we're going <laughs> to. We're going to go. Um, and the left side in the looks bottom. All right, just mm. Vernia, one second. I think yeah. someone was saying that the monkey was on, on its head. It's because it stopped while it was rotating. Uh, to fix that, you have some uh, uh, some numbers here. You go on direction. You have side. Remember, we changed the side of the monkey. You change its direction B to put 90 here in the number. Because if you put any other number, uh, the the monkey will be uh, uh, turning to to one side or another or on its head. So make sure that you have uh, ninety. So Verenia, yeah, tell us uh, which block are we taking now? So we're gonna we're gonna go to uh, the the looks block. The looks, all right. Yeah, and. We're gonna uh, we're gonna take the change change um, effect by uh, which one? So stop here. Uh, it's it's a little bit um, on the bottom. So on the bottom, which one? Uh, which block? Change space effect by. Ah, uh, change space effect. It's like here. It's here. It's it's. Um, so you you have to to, to scroll in, in the bottom. Oh, okay. I can see it oh, stops. So change color effect by twenty five. It's the third one not right now. Oh, change. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yes. Effect by twenty five. So this yes. plus. So guys, you need to this, scroll a little bit. Yeah. This plus. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna uh, and we're gonna drop it in the um in the repeat forty five. So after the turn. Right, uh, fifteen degrees. Yes, right here. Yeah. So this this line will allow us to to, to the monkey to change the color uh, when he won. So we're gonna so to test it, we, we're gonna click on the uh, the green flag. Yes. So uh, Veronia told us what she what she uh, she how. What, what, what we just added was that our monkey, it will rotate on itself and change the color. So, Veronia, let's test this. So, when we put the yeah, monkey next go. to the balloon, it is one, it's rotating, and you see that it's changing color. Yeah. All right. And uh, just before we continue, I see that someone uh, said that he adds sound, maybe at the end we can we can do that. But Vernia, do you have something else we can do? Another effect or something? Yeah, sure. 
yeah so right now we're gonna do um we're gonna let the monkey go uh in a random um um a random way uh after uh, when he won so uh for do that we're gonna go to the um <clears throat> motion button so in the menu it's the first one it's the blue one all right and we're gonna take um go to yeah uh go to oh, go to x and y so we took x y okay so this one this block go to x a value y a value yeah right and we're gonna put it after the change color effect by 25 change color yeah right oh, here here and In which after values? that yeah and after that we're gonna go in the green uh in the green button so in the green menu so operators because i put <laughs> random numbers so we're gonna write uh, we're gonna do we're gonna go to the operators and we're gonna change uh, we're gonna pick uh the pick random from two so, okay, so this yes one. so well yes right this so pick random one to ten and we're gonna put it after the go uh no um in the x um so do you see the number yes 209 so we're gonna put it in the middle like a like a puzzle yes right here mm -hmm. and um and because we want uh the monkey to to get in the random the vertical uh yeah. to the vertical so uh so uh we have to know the the number uh, the the dimension of the map so uh, I, I i know them so it's minus 20 uh, minus 240 so we're gonna change the one so no it's it's got it's not gonna be one to ten it's gonna be minus 240 240 and then yes two 240 240 yeah all right and and we're gonna pick an, uh, another time the pick random one to ten, and we're gonna put it in the in the x. Okay, so in, in the y axis. So we we're gonna pick. Yes. We're gonna put our monkey at random uh, places, and uh, yes. we're using these blocks to to pick randomly. Random All numbers. Right. So it could it could it could pick two hundred right. Um, uh, 40 but it couldn't it couldn't be a uh, minus 250 so because we we have we, we decided that the numbers will be between minus 240 and 240 so uh for the x for the x for the y choice for the y x so we're gonna put from um from minus 180 uh, minus two 200 180 to 180. Yes, right. We'll move randomly on the x vertical, uh, on the the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. So if we right. clicked on the on the green flag, and we go just and we touch, oh, the balloon, the monkey is very happy. Yeah, <laughs> he's so that free. was. <laughs> Yeah, so that was to celebrate, uh, to celebrate that we won. Uh, what we did was, uh, when we touched the balloon, we will say you won for two seconds, and then it it will rotate while going into random places and changing the color. So there's a lot uh, of things that we can add to celebrate. So you see that it was going in uh, random directions, random positions. So. Uh, Guys, I think uh, we are done with today's uh, coding session. Um, I see that a lot of you are done. Can you tell us if everything is good for you on your side? Um, yeah, so we have our platform game. Congratulations, everyone. You did a great job. Uh, a lot of you are uh, finishing this really fast. And yeah, congratulations for your work. Tell us if you're done in the chat.
it's working. Yes, it's working. That's perfect. If you have any question, you can uh, post it in the chat and we can uh, answer you. So I guess now we're going to move on to the certificates. So as you know, at the end of this session, uh, each uh, code at home session, you get the a success certificate and we're going to do that now. So we're going to post in the chat a link for you to get your certificate with your name on it. So, uh, and then uh, this certificate, to get the certificate, you need a workshop code that we also post code. You can also see it in the, on the screen right now. It's CS175IN. <clears throat> you can directly see it in the YouTube chat. We posted it and we're actually gonna do this with you guys to, to show you how to get your certificate. So tell us if you have any issue getting your certificate. All right, so we go, when you click on the link, you get, you go to this web page here. And if you move, if you scroll a little bit, you need to put your first name and last name in the workshop code. So I'm going to put my name, Soraja, and then last name in the workshop code. The workshop code we posted in the YouTube chat. So it's this one, workshop code. If we submit, you click on the submit button at the bottom. All right, it's loading. Mm. After the submit button, you, you, you can get your certificate. That is taking a little bit of time. So, I think I have the, some Wi Fi issues. Let me just. If you're having issues getting your certificate, which is that because a lot of people are trying to get their certificate right now, you need to wait a little bit. And as you can see, me too, I have a, uh, there's a lot of people on the, on the website right now. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait a little bit. Working and for someone is saying that it's working. Um, all right. I don't know if Betty can can see if there's a an issue. Uh, I'm not able to get working for someone. It's working. See, so it's working. If you can't get your Certificate right now, you can just wait a little bit. Uh, I'm putting again the page. For some people, they got their certificates, while others, it's still loading. I think for, for me too, there's a, um, a lot of you on the website. So guys, I'm gonna let you try to, to get your certificate. In case you have, uh, you still can, uh, you can email us at code home, us your name, and we are going to send you the, 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 the certificate immediately. So I'm just checking the chat. Brazil. All right. Is there? You, you can um, you can tell us. All right, I'm just gonna uh, tell you a little bit about uh, the the code at home. So we have an, an app called Code at Home, where you can find the schedule of the upcoming sessions, and you can register to the one you want and get um, immediately the the link 
to to the workshop. And uh, please, guys, um, subscribe to this YouTube channel and like. And you can get you can see the previous workshops. You can redo them again if you didn't do them, or you can actually get this one if uh, your code is not complete. You can always watch the replay of uh, the the sessions and do them again. And in case your code is not working, what you can do is send us an email with your code, maybe a screenshot, or if it was a Python uh, code, you can send us what it looks like or copy paste it. Uh, as well, and we're going to make sure to help you uh, to fix your problem. So, um, all right, it's working for me. I, it's good. I got it. All right, some of you are getting their certificates. Um, all right, so. We can just wait a little bit. Uh, everything will be posted on the YouTube, uh, this YouTube video under the, the description. We're going to put all the links that we shared during this session and also uh, our email address uh, to get your certificate immediately. Uh, if, uh, if you still can't get it right now. We're going to wait a few minutes and then we our the, today's session will be ended. We're going to end this live. So we're li li let, leaving you a few minutes. Before we end this live, thank you guys. Thank you for participating and I see that a lot of you uh, participated in previous workshops as well. We're really happy to receive you again and sure to um, subscribe to this YouTube channel to see when another live is on and see the previous um, sessions. All right. So I'm just going to post the messages for, uh, for um, the with the email address. So our email, it's uh, displayed on the screen code at home at emma.org. And I'm posting the message. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm posting it on the chat right now. Thank you guys. Thank you for participating. We're really happy to receive you. Please tell us uh, your feedback via email or on our social media. Follow us on our social media as this I just uh, displayed on the screen. I'm just putting the messages on the YouTube chat. We're going to end this live really soon. Um, thank you. Thank you again. All right, let's see. Yeah. Thank you. We're looking forward to seeing you in the upcoming events.